Hey everyone, it's Aisha here. So recently I actually posted a video about don't dim your light, right? And after I recorded that video, I started to do a lot of reflection, right? Just like just spending a lot of time in prayer because it really hit me like just how much I had been dimming my light. And so, and I was just talking to my therapist about this. I'm like, you know, I really feel like I have been dimming my light because I'm a single mom. And I know I spoke about it, um, you know, in the original video, but as I've been having a little bit more reflection on that topic, I wanted to share that with you. And so one of the things that I noticed is that prior to becoming a single mom and really before i dealt with a lot of betrayal um and just different issues and i know in the original video i talked about even when i was younger dimming my light because of dating and guys being intimidated by my education level by my career and everything so i used to play dumb and everything in order to make them feel more comfortable with you know, with me because some of the people were intimidated and how I dealt with that in fr as friend, like with friends too, where I pretended like, where I didn't want to share different accolades and things because I didn't want other people to feel bad, right? But like specifically with being a single mom, one of the things that I realized is that because I had been parenting the opposite of what I saw as single mom stereotypes, that that became my focus like not wanting to be the opposite not wanting to be a stereotypical single mom because the twins dad said that i would be a single stereotypical single mom and my kids would be like stereotypical children and single moms and i didn't realize how i bought into the stereotypes um myself like i always thought that i was parenting the opposite to that but i didn't realize that i adopted those stereotypes as my own identity i knew that his words hurt right but i didn't know to the extent that i adopted those words to my own as my own identity well i think i kind of knew but i didn't realize how long right that had lasted i thought that you know that stuff had been broken a long time ago i knew i didn't believe it i know those weren't my words and i knew you know um, because I ended up, ended up writing a blog article about that in terms of how I didn't deserve, how I didn't believe I deserved to be clean. And so for a period of time, I didn't even shower or wear clean clothes because I didn't think that I deserved to be clean. But I think I was not fully aware to the degree that that level of worthiness, that level um, you know, uh, that level of worthiness impacted me that those Fear, the fear of the stereotypes impacted me and the length of time. Like I said, I thought that I had been long past that a long time ago. But as I was sitting there just talking to my therapist, because I had written an article about financial shame. And as I began to write that article, I began to process just the deep levels of unworthiness that I felt even in my own finances, even though I taught personal finances for years. I didn't believe, I didn't understand that in my hurt, I had adopted these feelings of unworthiness in terms of financial success, in terms of financial security, in terms of, you know, healthy finances that impacted how I ended up, you know, blowing all of my money and ultimately destroying my finances. And even in the rebuilding process, how parts of me would have this deep levels of fear around finances and i was just like why is this like this is not making any sense this is what i do this is what i've done for a living for so many years why are these emotions coming up as i manage my finances as i budget as i open bills like why is this fear coming over me like this doesn't make sense right and I started to think about even how I felt for years unqualified to teach personal finances. And so I stopped, right? Even though that has been what I had 
been doing for years and been featured in numerous national publications and local publications and interviews and everything for the work that I do with finances for single moms. I'm like, why is this deep level of unworthiness and insecurity and avoidance coming up for me? And so I was teaching a workshop just um, recently, just a few days ago. And as I was teaching about money mindset to these women, to these pregnant single moms, like I was challenged myself in terms of the things that I still subconsciously believe because normally I would teach from like okay this is where I was it's like you know these are the things that I have to watch out for and this is why I manage my money the way I do and here's why you need to be aware of these things and I go through the different types of money mindsets because I'm like this is going to impact how you manage your money and so I want you to be aware of it so when you're aware of it you can take it to you know your therapist or you can work through it or also develop strategies and a plan around managing your money in a healthier way and so I want you to be aware of your pitfalls so let's go through these mindsets so you can understand your your potential pitfalls in your money mindset and as I was teaching it I was just like hmm I need to go back and sit with this hmm and then that same day I was writing the article about financial shame and I'm like hmm okay I need to have a conversation with my therapist about this because there's still shame, right? And then as that I was processing this, just spending time reading the word and prayer before I saw my therapist. And I was just like, hmm. And then that same day I recorded um, the YouTube video for Don't Dim Your Light, right? And so I'm like, hmm, I see. There's still levels of shame that I need to deal with. There's still levels of insecurity I need to deal with. There's still levels of worthiness that I need to deal with. And as I was talking to my therapist, I'm like, hmm, I will go hard. Like, I'm telling you, like, I will go hard for my kids, right? Because, you know, for what they need, um, their education, I go hard. And I'm like, that's the one thing that I'm sure about you know my kids i will literally war for them in prayer in tongue like speaking in tongues in english like for hours just warring spiritually for my kids but i'm like hmm, i stopped short for doing that for myself and i'm like huh still some stuff that i need to deal with and it was just like an aha moment to understand how when you take on what society says and the, and the stereotypes of what society says, and when you take on your own fears of what your own limitations might be, like I took on every single fear that I had about being a single mom and adopted that as my identity. And because I had adopted that as my identity, that is why I was actively parenting in a way that was opposite. It wasn't that, you know, I was trying to avoid it because I was, right? I was trying to avoid it. But the only reason why I was so insanely focused on being the opposite was because at the core, that was who I saw myself as. And so if I, if I didn't see that as myself, then I would not have been so focused on being the opposite, right? And when I realized it, it was like, aha, I'm like, oh, the whole time, I just thought that I just didn't want to be that. But I did that because that is who I saw myself as subconsciously. This is why I could go so hard for my kids, right? To make sure they didn't lack anything, to make sure they had everything that they need. But I would not do that for myself, even though I desired it, right? Because at my core, the words cut me so deep, right? That that was the identity I took on. And I've shared this before. And at the core, I didn't realize that my own stereotypes and views about what a single mom was though, like other people, right? And what I saw in the media, what I saw like, you know, portrayed in the movies, I'm thinking 
I just didn't want to be the stereotype, but I didn't realize that at a subconscious level, I adopted that as my identity. And because I adopted that as my identity, I dimmed my own lights because I didn't think that I could shine brightly anymore. I hope you're getting this. Because when you take on an identity that's not yours, this is why you really need to guard your mind, right? This is really why you need to challenge all the thoughts and the things people say and ask yourself, do I want this to be me? Because subconsciously, you can end up adopting that as you and then become and begin to dim your light. You be, can begin to question your purpose. But when you question your purpose, it comes because you don't know who you are and you're now questioning your identity at its core, right? And so as a single mom, you need to understand and truly believe that you matter as a person. Your dreams matter. Your goals matter. You are not a stereotype. You are not what he said about you. That is not who you are. And I really need you to understand this at your core, at your soul. Because when you understand this at your core and at your soul, you will not dim your own light. Because when I was doing the video, right, I was thinking about all the ways that we allow other people to dim our lights, how we will allow other people to show up and cause us to question who we are. And we allow their words, their limitations, their things, right, to dim our light. I didn't realize really when I was recording it, and I know I talked about this briefly, to the extent that we condemn our own light because we are unsure about who we are. And we can end up operating in a fear, operating in lack, operating in unworthiness, and not knowing who we are in Christ. Not knowing that Christ died for us. While we were as sinners, Christ died for us. Like we didn't, and we never had to be perfect for Christ. But yet there's these feelings and of shame that can come on, which is rooted in this idea and this expectations of perfection that are unattainable, right? That can cause us to dim our own light because of shame, because we feel insecure, because we feel inadequate, because we feel unworthy, right? Rejection can come in. And because someone else rejected us, because someone else rejected our children, we take on that identity of rejection as our own, and we can end up rejecting ourselves. We can think that God has rejected us, but he didn't. And because we reject ourselves, and because we think that God has rejected us, we now operate from this place of rejection and we give up on our hopes and dreams because we're secretly self-sabotaging. This is what I was doing. We're secretly self-sabotaging because we do not think that it is possible for us anymore. Right? I think about Sarah, you know, Abraham's wife, Sarah, who she laughed when the angel of the Lord said she was going to bear a child because all she could see was rejection from other people because back during that time, if you didn't have a child, if you were barren um, as a woman, like you were defined by the number of children that you had. And if you did not have a child, you were rejected by society, right? And I think about single motherhood. Sometimes society, we can be rejected by, by society because we're a single mom, but then we take on that rejection from society. We take on that rejection from their dad. Some people rejection from your family because you're a single mom and you end up walking in the identity of rejection. And because you feel rejected, you reject yourself, your goals and your dreams before you have a chance to even walk in the door. Because you believe that you're going to be rejected. And because you believe that you're going to be rejected, you don't try anymore. You don't show up the way you need to anymore. And this is like a revelation that I was just getting just like over the last like couple of days just between these different experiences. And one of the things that I was thinking about even earlier today as this was like downloading into my mind, right? 
like there is a single mom she doesn't even know about this right and if she was watching this video she probably wouldn't even know that i was talking about her but there is um a single mom who I have a ton of respect for right a ton of you know a ton of respect like i said for and i admire her right and i think she's fantastic and i look at her right and i and you know we became single moms around the same time both business owners and things like that and i when i look at how she moves right she never adopted the identity of rejected she never adopted the words of what her child's father said to her she never acknowledged it never even saw herself as a single mom she just saw herself as a mom showing up for her kids and I see the difference, right, that it has made in her business. I see the difference that it made in her approach to life. And I see the difference, right, even now, right, in a new relationship that's beautiful. It even impacted her, it impacted her and how she viewed herself as being worthy for love and how she opened herself up to love to dating and did it from what i can see right did it have this fear around love because she knew what she deserved she knew what her what her child deserved right she knew and so she didn't allow rejection she didn't allow fear she didn't allow someone else's words to her or what someone else wants and whether that person wanted to be in her life and her child's life or not she never allowed that to impact her and I remember one time I was talking to her and she said she never saw herself as a single mom and because she never saw herself as a single mom those stereotypes those fears those things never once played a part in her mind and she never felt rejected she never felt stereotypical she never took on the limitations that you cannot succeed because you're a single mom never not once and it made all the difference she never dimmed her light and because she never dimmed her life light she always saw herself as worthy of financial success. She always saw herself as worthy of business success. She always saw herself, she didn't feel like she had to overcompensate in motherhood and be the mom and the dad because she knew that she was the mom and that the Lord had blessed her with an amazing support system so she didn't have to get out of her lane as being a mom. And she never fixated on the fact that her child didn't have that, never, never crossed her mind right she didn't take on that identity and it did not cause her to dim her light because she knew who her source was it was jesus christ and she knew who she was and because someone else rejected her she knew that that person okay cool don't want to be with me cool don't want to be a part of the child's life cool but guess what? I must still keep it moving because I know that I'm worthy of love. I know that I am worthy of success. I know that my child is worthy of love. And I know that I am worthy still. I know that I am that same person that had goals, dreams, unstoppable, talented, she never questioned her identity because someone else didn't want to be in her life, even like from pregnancy. So her mindset was different. Even though a single mom in pregnancy, even though the, the father didn't want to be a part of her life or her child's life, it never caused her to question who she was. And because of it, she was still checking off the things for her dreams. You know why? She didn't overcompensate in motherhood, right? Um, but not, and and she knew that if she stayed focused, everything was gonna be okay. And if she continued to trust in the Lord, everything was gonna be okay. And as I started to think about it, I'm like, her light shines so bright. It's beautiful. I love it. Absolutely love it, right? 
And I started to think, like, hmm, we cannot dim our own lights. We cannot reject ourselves. We cannot allow someone else who spoke cruel words, right, to cause us to question who we are. And one of the things is that she told me when we were talking, she said she knew her child would be watching from a small age as a baby. And so she knew that she needed to be all who God created her to be, to show her child that it didn't matter. Her child was worthy of the best. Her child could see success. And her child would know that there were no limitations because she saw her mom operating in a space of no limitations, right? And I think that that's powerful. One of the things that I said in the video, I think it was Adult Dim Your Life video, um, was that I, somebody asked me, what was the hardest thing about motherhood? And I said, becoming the person who I wouldn't cringe if my, one of my kids or both my kids said I wanted to be like you. Because I knew that if they said that, and this, that was like the motivation behind my healing. Because I knew that if my kids saw a broken me, that they would not know what it was like to be whole because they wouldn't be able to see it, right? I can point them to Jesus all day long. But my kids are going to look to me to see what it means to follow Christ. My kids are going to look to me to see what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean to follow your dreams? What does it mean to be whole? What does it mean to, be jo to have joy? What does it mean to rest on the Father? What does it mean to believe in your dreams? What does it mean? And if they don't see me walking it, how are they going to know that it's possible for them? And that became my motivation, right? My motivation became healing so my kids would see what was possible. But what I didn't realize is that deep down, I was doing it for them so they can see a good example. But there was a piece of me that did not believe it was possible for me. The desire came from outside of me. The desire did not come from within me. So there was still this tension, right? There's still this tension. And I was doing it. I was doing the healing work. But then it came to a point where it was like the Lord was saying, you're doing this for your kids. But I need you to see that it's possible, that you believe that it's possible. Because there's only so, like, there's a long way of healing, right? There's a lot of things that we can do because we're doing it for our kids. But then there's going to be a point where we have to do it for ourselves and to believe at our core who the Lord says that we are, who he says that he is, and that as a child of God, we are loved and we're deserving of love. And that God is calling us worthy, not because of anything that we can ever do, but because Jesus Christ has washed us clean. There comes a point where we have to say, you know what? Scripture says that there's no condemnation. So guess what? Even though someone else tried to condemn me, even though someone else tried to reject me, even though somebody else didn't want me, there's no condemnation. Their words mean nothing. You know why their words mean nothing? Because it's God, through Jesus Christ, who has already said, I love you. It is God who said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
that who shall, whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It is that that we have to be able to take hold on. It is that truth that in Christ we are a new creation. New creation means that we're no longer unwanted. It means that we're no longer rejected. And that means that whatever the world says about single moms does not have to be our identity. You know why? Because Christ and Christ, that has been the thing that has given us our identity. Not people. Not even what we believe. It's Christ. And the sooner you realize that, the better. The sooner you will stop dimming your light. The sooner you will stop negotiating with God about what's possible. Because the reason why Sarah laughed when God said she was going to have a child in her 90s was because she did not believe that God was truly the God of the impossible. And she didn't believe that it was possible for her. We can stand in faith, prayer, and fasting for other people all day long, right? But at some point, we have to believe that those words, those prayers, the promises of God apply to us. And until we believe that the promises of God apply to us, we will continue to dim our light. We will continue to negotiate for less. We will continue to fight God when he's trying to elevate us. We will continue to question God when he says, I want to open up the storehouses and give them to you. We will be like, mm, not worthy. Not going to believe you. Going to self-sabotage. Not going to move forward. Going to operate in stagnation. Going to operate in fear. Because we don't trust God. There's an unbelief. So I want you to pray, Lord, help my unbelief. That is something I've been praying myself today. Lord, help my unbelief. Help me to see you. Help me to want to move forward for me. Yes, I want to move forward for my kids. Yes, I want full and complete healing because I want to be a good example for my kids. But help me to want this at my core for me. Because I know that I deserve joy. That's the promise, right? Right? That's the promise of God. I deserve healing. I deserve wholeness. I deserve peace. I deserve love. Why? Because you died on the cross for me. And as a child of God, as the righteousness of God, that is a promise from Him. Right? And so I share this with you, right? It's literally like real time revelation. But I know I'm not the only one, right? Who sometimes does not understand our. I mean, I didn't understand that that was a blind spot. I thought that I had already moved past that. And I had that revelation that that was a blind spot. And I don't want anybody else to have those types of blind spots. I want you to step into the fullness of who you are in Christ. And I want you to have the promises of Christ. And so I pray that this has blessed you. Um, I encourage you to pick up a copy of the book, Navigating the Impossible, a survival guide for single moms from pregnancy through the first year of motherhood. It is on Amazon, and so make sure you grab your copy today. Make sure you like this video, share it, um, yeah, share it, and leave a comment to let me know how this has helped you. Have a good one. Bye.